There's no one better to learn mindset from than a fighter. And that's because they are just like us in the sense of they are always preparing for a fight. You know, there's an old saying when it comes to life that you're either just getting through a storm, you are in the middle of a storm, or you are about to be in a storm. And I feel like fighters embody that exactly because they've either just gotten out of a fight, they are in the process of fighting, or they're preparing for a fight. So with this episode of the JRE MMA Show 134 with Bilal Muhammad, we're learning about the mindset of a fighter. And I love this because he's talking about eating and he's talking about how he goes about it when it comes to binging and then being not strict, but being healthy. Let's get into it. Coach Colin here. Coolest, I was going to say coolest MMA coach. What? No, coolest high performance coach in the world. <laughs> and if you want the absolute best insights of the podcast and videos you love, hit that subscribe button. Let's get into it. Surgery. Yeah. It's a, well, you know, I hope he heals up, but I hope he realizes that. I mean, he's openly talked about having an eating disorder. Yeah. They're talking about Patty. Patty right now. You know, and some guys do get that when they cut a ton of weight, and it's it really fucks with them. And you always had that mentality, like when you're in camp and it's about to be like two or three weeks out, and you feel so good because you're eating healthy for yeah. six to eight weeks, and it, like your body feels good, your energy feels good. And I always tell myself, like after this fight, I'm not eating bad. I'm not gonna go on any bad binges or anything. But it's like right after you win, you're like, I don't care no more. Like I'm eating whatever <laughs> I want. And, yeah, you're like I'll make up for it. But it only has to be for me. It's I only give myself a week. If you go uh, past one week, yeah, you go to two to three to four weeks. That and, week must be glorious, though. <laughs> man, it's like heaven. I, and especially if you're winning. If, and then for me, I was like, yeah. I was flying back from Dubai. Uh, from Abu Dhabi and I was like I'm upgrading the uh, business class I'm gonna do business class I got me like a big bag of M&M's I'm just sitting there front row my nice. brother is able to sneak up there with me uh, in business class because it was like empty seats and they, like, they never asked him so he sat up there the whole time with me so me him, and my coach are just sitting up there eating M&M's yeah oh let me get some French toast let me get this so it was like <laughs> it was what's, like the best ride ever what's your binge food the one binge food that you like to go to after a fight I love nachos. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a nacho guy. I'm chips and cheese. Like when mm. I'm in Vegas one time, I was on the same, me and Anthony Pettis, we were uh, training together and we both won that on a card together. And he comes up to me. He's like, hey, uh, we're going to go to the, the club at, uh, I, forget, I don't know what even name of the club was. And he was like, so I was like all right, we're going to get a table over there. And I was like, yeah, I'm going to go get a uh, nacho daddy. I'm going to go get some nachos. And he was like, <laughs> looked at me like I was such a loser. And my coach, <laughs> my coach is like, bro, you're such a lame. And I was like, because I don't drink or party or anything. But my family's always at all the fights with me. So my best time is celebrating with them, going to eat with them. So he's looking at me like, you're a lame man. And I was like, bro, let's go eat. And he's like, all right, man, let's go. Let's go together. So, well, so you're probably fun. adding time to your career by not drinking. You're probably adding time to your career. Yeah. You know, so it's like, drinking's fun. There's a reason why people like to do it. There's a reason why <laughs> bars are everywhere. It's fun. But the reality is, it's fucking terrible for you. And if you're a professional athlete and you're in this world of professional athleticism that has very little room for error, which is what you're in. I mean, you're in the the, yeah. the the hardest fucking sport, I think, in the world. And if you can maximize your recovery and maximize your health and maximize your vitality by not drinking alcohol, I would, you know, I would tell people to do it. I mean, maybe a glass of wine here and there, a little glass yeah. of whiskey, no big deal. But guys who get drunk, guys who like really like to party and drink, man, you are fucking chipping away at your health. Yeah. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Yeah, I mean, I know a lot of guys that do it, and then they'll come into the practice room on Monday or hungover or something, and oh, you're not get really getting up. as much out of the session. No, and, and you, you like, get hurt. Yeah, and yeah. I've seen it happen to a lot of guys, and I tell them, like, how bad do you want it, how serious do you want it, these younger fighters? Yeah. And I tell them, like, it's not an easy road. Everybody always asks me for advice. How, how do you get to the UFC? And I'm like, there's no, there's no, like, easy road to the UFC. There's some people that – will skyrocket right in there. Like you said, they're famous. Mm -hmm. They got a, a following behind them, and they're going to blow up right away. Or there's guys that have to inch their way in. Guys and, like you that grind. Yeah. You've ground, you worked your way through 
contender after contender after yeah. contender. You've been grinding, dude. Yeah. I appreciate that, though, man. That's a mentality that I really appreciate because it's hard to do. And no one has to tell you that. That's a yeah. hard. When you're not making these monumental leaps in terms of like public consciousness and being celebrated, you're steady up that fucking ladder. That's what you're doing. And that, to me, is some of the most impressive shit. Like that Sean Brady fight, that was a big fight, man. Yeah. That. Man, that's what I'm talking about. Like, I, I love this guy. Because if you're if you're really listening to the like if you're listening past just like what they're talking about, like you can hear the values, you know, like, oh, my my binge thing is nachos. Like if you talk to a lot of regular people, it's like, what's your binge thing? It's like, oh, well, one time I drank tequila until I blacked out and I was on somebody's roof and his thing is nachos. And then he gives himself a week of binging, you know. Uh, and it's just food and there's no alcohol and there's no drugs involved. And then he gets back to being healthy. Like you got to look at the values of a person like that. Like I, I absolutely love it. And a good, again, he talks about it a lot in the episode has to do with his faith, but at the same time, it's still him as a man executing on these things or, or staying away from certain things. And then how much, how much more of a fighter, how much more of a contender that makes him in the UFC. And it's like you, in your life, how much more of a contender will you become if you decide to discipline yourself to that extent? And it sounds like it's not fun, and it sounds like it's really restrictive, but in actuality, it gives you a lot of freedom. Like, if you notice when you're watching JRE, when you're watching content when you're seeing interviews with people who have done big things all of them are disciplined all of them are focused all of them have restricted themselves to doing you know one thing and not doing a bunch of other things all of them and what do they really look like when you're watching them they look like they're rich they look like they're famous they look like they have freedom it's because the discipline, if you're if you're a fan of Jocko, you already know, discipline creates freedom. It really does. Because you don't have to worry about all this other shit. You don't have to worry about what drug you're going to do, how much you're going to drink, doing this thing, how many girls you're going to bang, all this stuff. You don't have to worry about all that because you just get disciplined. You narrow your focus. I talked about in the last episode I just did. You narrow your focus. It's 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 the best thing for you to do. And then again, when Joe Rogan talks about it, he's like, you're probably adding to your career by not drinking. You add to your life by not drinking. And I'm not saying, listen, I'm exactly what Joe said. I'm not saying, hey, you know, completely restrict yourself from drinking. Don't drink any alcohol. I don't drink alcohol. That's just my choice. My dad was like an alcoholic. So I got like, I just, I don't want to end up like that. So I know not to do that. But, and I'm not saying for you to never drink, but it's like, restricting that stuff will help there will be a certain clarity there's certain people who build up momentum from monday to thursday and then all of a sudden friday saturday sunday even they go off the rails because they keep getting drunk and then they walk into monday it's really the it's really a big reason why most people hate mondays It's because you're like oh 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 and the only reason you're so pumped for Friday is because you've been able to sustain from drinking and doing, you know, I, most of us, you know, sustain from drinking and doing drugs up until Thursday. That's why you feel so pumped about Friday. You don't feel pumped about Friday because you're about to get drunk. You feel pumped about Friday because you have the energy to be pumped. It's completely different than what people are thinking. I, I don't know. I just just seeing seeing this guy and now learning about his career and Joe's right. Like I looked into his career, he's had to just fight and fight and fight and fight. And it's just been like this steady fighting, fighting, fighting. And, you know, Joe's nice enough to put him on this platform to get him into, as they said, like um, public consciousness. So people start learning about this guy. But he's been grinding. He's been grinding. No drugs, no alcohol, no banging random chicks, focused. And he's a contender. What are you willing to do in life to become a contender for that thing that you want, for that job that you want, for that promotion that you want, for that business that you want? What are you willing to get rid of? And a better question, what in your life right now should you get rid of? 
Let's not even ask what you're willing to. What should you get rid of in order for you to become a better version of yourself? You know what it is. I'm not going to I'm not going to make a list right now cuz you know what those things are. And you should write them down. Write them down and then look at that list. I'm always talking about writing shit down, man. It's important. I'm telling you it's important. Write it down and look at that list and be like does is this list of just pleasures and being undisciplined is this list more important than what I could be? And then write out what you could be. Write out who you could be and then compare the two things and and, and think to yourself which one's more important. I don't know, man. It'd be a good exercise. Give it a try. I'm out.